Now very often we want to have a common look and feel across all the web pages of our website and that is appropriate. JSF makes this very straightforward by using what's known as a template file. So you can see in these two views here that we've got the same look and feel. We've got the university logo here and then the content of the page is inside a box with a double border, a green background and then the content varies according to the view. So what we need to do in our JSF application is to define a template file and then to use that template in the JSF views. And this is done with three files, one for the template and one each for the two views. In the template file, the ellipsis indicates that this is where we put all our code to show what the template stuff is. So here we would have a university logo and the setting up of the box with the double border and green background and so on. But the important thing is the UI insert element. Now UI is the prefix that is defined here as the namespace for the facelets namespace and allows us then to access this insert element and we're giving it the name content. In the view file we have two elements that are important here. The first one is composition. The composition element has an attribute called template which links to the template file. Within the composition element there is a define element and this is what links to the content placeholder. So here we have in the template a placeholder called content and here in the view we're saying we're using that template and this is the definition that is to replace the placeholder in the template. And then where this ellipsis is, is where we put our content. Whatever we want to display within that template at the point for content, that goes here. So take a look at the code in the example that you can download from Blackboard and see how the template and the views work. The other thing I want to point out with this example is the use of navigation rules. We have a very simple navigation model, which is that we start with the index.xhtml file and when we submit it, if we have success in that submission, we will end up at response.xhtml. And then when we submit this one, which is a back button, if the outcome is back, then we will end up here. So we've got transitions from one view to another with labels that indicate the outcome that would take us to the next view. Now we can encode these rules in a file called webinf slash facesconfig.xml. And this is what the file looks like. We can have as many navigation rules as we want. For each navigation rule, we will specify the view that we're coming from. And then we can nominate as many navigation cases as we want. What this one says is when we're coming from index.xhtml, in the case that the outcome is success, then we're going to go to the view response xhtml. Now because we can have as many navigation cases as we like, that means we can have several outcomes from a particular view. Each outcome would be listed as a separate navigation case within this navigation rule and could therefore potentially give us different destinations from the index view to another view depending on the outcome. So this would give us the potential then for different destinations based upon different outcomes. In the second rule, we're saying to get from response xhtml, we must have an outcome of back that will take us then to index. I'm going to leave you to look at the code to examine how the template is used and how the navigation rules are used. I'm just going to point out to you a couple of things. First of all, the location of the navigation rules. And second, how resources are used. If you open up the web pages folder and then within that open the web inf folder, you will find a faces config XML file. Inside there is where we specify the navigation rules. Now the resources are simply another folder within web pages that is called resources and we can have whatever we want in there. Now I've got a folder called CSS in which there is the hello.css file and another folder for images which is where I've got the university logo. 
In the template file, there is a reference to these resources. When we're putting in the tag for the output style sheet, we specify the library as CSS. That folder is inside the resources folder. Also, when we have the element for graphic image, we specify the URL. That URL has an expression language statement that specifies resource and then in the square brackets the folder colon file name. So this is how we can make use of resources. So we've now seen three examples that illustrate the very basic concepts of Java server faces, including and most importantly the JSF lifecycle. That life cycle is going to figure very heavily in our understanding of how all our components interact with each other. In forthcoming lectures, we will look at how, as part of the life cycle, we will perform conversions and validations. And we will also look at some other, slightly more complicated UI components.